Hello, hello. It is Sarah Waggle, astrologer and leadership coach for this moon astrology tarot. This is the moon in Aries. This is February 12th through the morning of the 14th, Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day if you celebrate. And this is like the darkest Valentine's Day if ever there were a Valentine's Day. Uh, I actually don't like Valentine's Day, but it's not for why you would think. I don't like it because it's like overshadowing my birthday, which is the 18th. So that's why I don't like it. Um, but whatever, it is what it is. And the chocolate's good. So there you go. Um, all right. So we have Mars entering Aquarius and then it's going to conjunct Pluto. <laughs> this could be really ugly. It like has the potential to be ugly. It also has the potential to be very empowering. Um, because we had Mercury enter Aquarius. We then had the Aquarius new moon, and then we had the moon in Pisces. Um, all the while we have this Saturn sextile Jupiter situation. That's, that's like back, like when we get these outer planets, it's like a background, uh, guidance system. And then you get to the personal planets like Mars, uh, Venus and Mercury, it's more the day-to-day -day stuff. And then of course the luminaries being the sun and the moon, um, you know, just they do their job, right? The sun is our heart center and the moon is our emotional body. And interestingly enough, as Mars enters Aquarius and conjuncts Pluto, the moon in Aries, which is a fiery moon anyway, is going to cross over the, on the building conjunction between Chiron and the North node. This is why I think this could be incredibly empowering um, because people are, you know, you're starting to see where you want your life to go. You're starting to get a glimpse and you could really feel empowered through this moon in Aries and power plays are for sure possible with Mars conjuncting Pluto. So Mars is the ruler of Aries, co-ruler of Scorpio. Pluto is the co-ruler of Scorpio. Um, and so these two plants get together and they don't fuck around. And I, I mean that in like, <laughs> there's no way sugarcoating this. There is no sugarcoating this one. Um, the, <sighs> This is also zero degrees Aquarius. It's the most authentic, naive version of Aquarius. Um, and like, you better be ready for game changing shit. Uh, there's kind of just no way around it. And it can go in a fabulously good, empowered, powerfully good way. If you've been doing your work, if you've been, you know, focusing your attention on your projects, this is why I was so strongly encouraging you focusing on your own projects, latter part of 2023. I think it was around Sagittarius season that I really started preaching that because now is the time where you could make some pivotal or some pivotal opportunities could plop into your lap, or you could make a pivotal choice that, that opens the door for an opportunity to plop into your lap, or it could go drastic. Like I certainly wouldn't enter this Valentine's day with any expectations of your boyfriend doing the thing he hasn't been doing for the last, however many years you've been together or your husband or your you know, whatever your, whoever your significant other is. Um, I feel like this could be that Valentine's day where if you're a, a drama queen, who's expecting the guy to step up to the plate and he hasn't been doing it this far, like you you could be pushed over the edge and just end the shit. Um, I don't mean to talk about relationships like they're so bad, but I think it's like people enter Valentine's Day with this expectation of the relationship, you know, him actually showing you what he's actually thinking. And he's been showing you the whole damn time. Uh, and, you know, but the, the, the positive of this is that, you know, if you have a relationship that's been moving through the moving through um, a lot of change, 
then renegotiations of your relationship could be in order, right? Like I said before, I'm hearing a lot about, you know, couples sleeping in separate beds or sleeping in separate rooms and whatnot. And I think that is a real possibility for a lot of couples. Also a lot of like potentially uh, polyamorous type relationships where couples choose to have multiple partners. Um, I, I'm certainly, you know, being nearly 45 at this point in my life, like having had multiple relationships, you know, years before, like, I don't know that I am the type of person who believes we're meant to have one person for our entire life. Let's think about this for a second, as we are deconditioning ourselves and deprogramming ourselves from old system structures, a lot of couples by the time, you know, some couples do stay together a lifetime and they grow together and they're happy by, you know, old age, whatever. But a lot of couples are pretty miserable by the time they're old, old age, because they've outgrown each other, or they just, you know, they, they got together because of the kids or stayed together because of the kids or whatever. Like there's so many different circumstances. I'm only using kids as one circumstance. Um, so I just feel like if you're entering this Valentine's day with some sort of high expectation of, you know, it being a romantic holiday, it's not going to happen. It could, maybe you've got a great dude, you know, like he's one of the good ones. Right. And he does all of the things, right. I don't want to paint this as like a whole like doom and gloom, but I do think there's going to be a lot of power play type things. There's going to be a lot of situations where I almost want to say like masculinity is struggling to step up to the plate. And that's where a lot of the explosive behavior is coming from, from them, because they, they don't know how to, like, they don't know how to be men and they want to be, but they don't know where their place is anymore. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know why that's coming through, but maybe that's just it. Like, right. Like we, you know, this is my issue with the feminist movement is that we met like, because women wanted to be men or masculine, like stepping into their masculine, like now men don't know what to do right? They don't know what to do. So if a man offers to hold the door for you, please invite them, allow them. If a man offers to put your groceries in the car for you, please let them because men are needing to be men. And that's what men are supposed to do. And this is coming from a former feminist. I studied actually minor feminism in college. <laughs> it's just kind of funny now because now I'm like, what was I thinking? Um, but this North Node conjunct Chiron is going to be building for a bit. Um, and I think there is like, you know, this like forgiving yourself. Like I get to go back and, you know, forgive myself. I thought that feminism was the way to go. I thought that feminism was good as a legally blind female. You know, I really thought that feminism, but now I'm like, oh, wait a minute. But that meant that, you know, after I studied feminism in college, then like I'd be on a metro train carrying all my shit and no dude was offering me a seat. And I'm like, well, this sucks, right? And so I think there's like this part of masculine that doesn't know, like man, men wanting to be masculine, but they don't know how, right? I I, I I could cite so many examples here, but let me let me not because I could go off on some tangents. I think there's just this room for, masculine men wanting to be masculine men but women have forgotten not all women but like you know because of feminism we've sort of forgotten how to allow men to be men so let's see what's up with the tarot mm -hmm. hope you're all doing fabulous and all of the things and yes, my birthday is coming up. Ooh. I think, uh, wait a second. Okay, the hanged man. And this is a uh, Barkley. The hanged man. The hanged man is when we like intentionally like 
by blocking our blessings, by blocking our opportunities, we hang ourselves or we get ourselves caught in limbo. Um, and so I feel like when we are um, preventing, this comes from not only blocking our blessings, but also resisting uh, letting shit go, right? Like the people who stay in relationships because they don't want to be alone, right? That's what this is. This <laughs> That's what this is. Is the, the, you don't want to be alone. So you stay with them, even though you can't stand them or vice versa. You stay with her because even though you can't stand her, um, or you stay at a job, even though you can't stand it, but you know, you, 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 so you block the opportunity or the blessing that could be coming for you, but you've blocked it. So use this, um, uh, moon in Aries. I love this moon in Aries. I'm all for a fire moon. Cause I don't have a lot of fire in my natal charts. I'm all for a fire moon. Um, but use this moon in Aries and this Mars conjunct Pluto as a freaking opportunity to empower yourself to let go of, or, uh, you know, let go of the thing that you've been struggling to let go of, but also to like allow in what is available for you, what's ready for you, what's awaiting you. Like, uh, it's kind of like the, um, the idea of like, uh, letting go of something that you love to allow in something that you could be ecstatic about, right? Or beyond your wildest dreams about, right? I loved living in Chicago and I loved having my place in Chicago, but I was willing to let it go to have something different. And holy cow, like, you know, here I am four years later, having lived in California, having lived in Arizona, having traveled and house sat to places I never could have imagined, right? I haven't crossed the pond, but I mean, I got to go to the upper peninsula of Michigan. I never thought I'd go to the UP. It was gorgeous up there, right? Um, you know, got to go to Colorado, um, you know, just all of the opportunities. And it was because I was like, as much as I love Chicago, I am glad that I let go of something that I loved to have an opportunity or an experience that I could have never imagined. And that taught me so much about myself, my capabilities and my, uh, my resistant resistance, my resourcefulness, my, uh, all of those things. So I feel like that's what that hangman is speaking to is like, let go of the thing that you love to invite in or welcome in the thing that could blow your freaking mind. Um, and in the oil department, we have, hang on, let me revert my colors so I can see better. Um, cilantro, which is balances and expands the mind, ooh, balances and expands the mind. I feel like this is perfect because in the moon Pisces, we had the lemon eucalyptus, which is also one of those that like revitalizes and balances and eucalyptus is an ex expander as well. Um, and so obviously if you don't have cilantro oil, put some fresh cilantro on your food. Um, there's also some teas that have cilantro in them. Um, but you can also use like, uh, amethyst crystal, um, rose quartz, uh, sunstone. Maybe I'm thinking that cause I have a sunstone sitting here, but you know, use these things that, like allow you to expand your mind not only your crown chakra but also like your solar plexus chakra because you need the personal power in order to allow the expansion right you've got to feel good about the expansion so be attentive to your digestive system send that as we move up to this virgo full moon um which is happening on like think the 25th i don't know um i got hair in my mouth um but anyway, my point is, is like, you know, pay attention to, to your digestive system because that's your solar plexus. Check out some solar plexus balancing shock, balance, solar plexus chakra balancing, uh, meditations, 
eat some foods that support your solar plexus chakra, things that are yellow, wear yellow, wear gold, um, all of these things. Um, because when we have like the upper three chakras, right, the throat, the third eye and the crown, and if we're expanding our mind, we're expanding and allowing things to come through our crown chakra, it's got to come through our whole body. Right. And I don't know why solar plexus is showing up probably because digestive system. Uh, but you know, to be attentive to those things. So anyway, use this Aries moon, please use this Aries moon, um, as an opportunity to really catapult something. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it could be a really icky time. So just be prepared for it to be a very icky time. It does not have to be. Um, and so we're all going to go through it together. So <laughs> feel free to come back here and drop me a comment. Like, holy shit, this Valentine's day was amazing. He blew my mind. I just, you know, like whatever, or, oh my God, you were right. Like this was an icky Valentine's day. Um, and so I hope you have a beautiful Valentine's day. And if nothing else, show yourself your, the love, and support and honor that you are able to and capable of having for yourself. So thanks for tuning in. I will talk to you on the next one. Bye-bye.